Hello, my name's Stuart Wright. We're on FrightFest TV. Please tell me your name and your role on the film On the Edge. Hello, my name is Kevi. Uh, I did all the music. I did the original score and original music for On the Edge, and I was also a producer on it. Okay. Yeah. So, as the guy who made the score, yeah. Where does where does the brief begin in terms of your conversation with the Soska sisters, and then what do you do with that information? So I've done the music for all their movies. Okay. Um, we've been friends since 2008 or something like that. Mm. Uh, they made a movie called Dead Hooker in a Trunk, and I, uh, I met them when they were making it, and they needed music for it. So I gave them free range to my catalog, and lucky mm. for me, they picked a whole bunch of it. <laughs> so usually, what we'll do is we'll just hang out. We hang out a lot. Mm. And they'll just tell me about the movie, and usually I'll come up with an idea for the end credits song. Yeah. It's always the best song in the movie. It's when the credits hit. It's where you get a good Nine Inch Nails song or something like that. So I usually start with that. So this movie was no exception. So started there. I'm um, on a David Fincher kick, so watched a couple of his movies, namely Seven. Yeah. And uh, I like the score in that and Black Mirror. So I discussed that with them, and then that's kind of what I based it on. And then, and then. What's your process then for then compiling? Are you are you are you doing it away from the film, or are you having to wait for the film to make uh, the music? So I actually went to set, and I watched Aramis get tortured, and it inspired me. Okay. So I wrote some of the music there and just showed it to them. And then they actually did some of the scenes, I think, to the music as I was making it. So but in what way did it inspire you? In, in terms of just uh, just you get an idea of what would support the imagery. Okay. So, so I was watching it. I the, the colors of the scene, what he looked like, what he was wearing or wasn't wearing. And uh, I just started making it, and then there it's great. It's a fast process because they're there to go, yep, that sounds great. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's kind of, there's definitely an industrial edge to what's yeah. going on in this film, which, yeah. which yeah. goes against this kind of intimate talk of domination. So, and there's, there's religious overtones too. So I tried to combine sort of like dirty future electronic mm. industrial music with sort of romantic overtones, but also a religious overtone as well. And in a way, I mean, Nine Inch Nails early videos. Oh yeah. Could have been, you know. Yeah, closer. I don't know if there's a yeah. better, more disturbing video than that. Yeah. And what, what for you, do you remember being the most challenging piece of music in terms, in terms of what, you, what you're able to put to the film? It's interesting because there, there were moments <laughs> where, on the other side of the spectrum, there were moments where I just, try a piece of music as a placeholder that I'd already made a long time ago and the timing of it even worked perfectly. So that was strange. But then there there's a part where um there's a part where I don't want to give it away. But there was we're, a part we're, we're gonna be this will go out after the film's finished. <laughs> okay, You're okay great. You're okay. Okay, great. Uh there's a part where they're they're doing a certain something with a certain cooked bird and uh I did three pieces of music for it and then we use the first one. So <laughs> Now, I was talking earlier, I don't know if you know, Simon Boswell had a documentary playing this morning. Okay. Looking at his music. And yeah. I got to speak to him. Yeah. And a question I asked him, which I'd like to ask you as well, yeah. is that to, to make music obviously comes from a love of music first. Yeah. yeah. So, and you've mentioned artists that are influences. Yeah. How do you ensure when you're kind of going, right, I'm going to go on a Nine Inch Nails tip that you yeah. still end up making your music, yeah. not an absolute just homage? Even if you try and rip it off, it ends up sounding like you. It's a wonderful artist trick. Uh, Prince told me that in an interview <laughs> that I read of him before I was born. Uh, yeah, but it, it was interesting because they will be, they, you know, throughout the movie, they were like, we need, we, uh, the placeholder for this was Danzig. So I just did a Danzig impression song and then it just ended up working. And then, you know, there's another part where I wanted it to feel like, uh, you know, something from a Robert Rodriguez film. And then, so I just do my version of it. It's kind of cool if you just think like, I want to do something like it might have been in Grindhouse, then you don't actually listen to it and just from memory try and make it. it. Kind of works. They're always the best films from memory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there was this Dirty Projectors record where he tried to recreate covers of an entire Black Flag album from memory, and it's so messed up. It's hilarious, but it's also like, wow, it's, it's like, if I, if I don't know if that's very accurate, but that's pretty cool. And finally, we're at the, the, the Empire Leicester Square for the world premiere. Yeah. How does it feel to be in it? Like, it's hallowed turf for premieres, and, you, and you're here for yours. Yeah. How does that feel? Such an honor. You know, I, I still feel like uh, I'm going to get found out soon that I'm a total fraud and I should be not here and sent back to Canada. <laughs> well, on that, Bob Chill. I deserve it. So, thank you very much for joining us on Fright Fest thank TV. You. Thanks for having me. Pleasure.